Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph, Joe. How are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months and then check back in with me? Hmm? Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, it's, it's amazing. I, hey, do, doc, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, you just drew this. That's right, wow. Born from imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use form from imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking form from imagination if you experience any of these side effects, loss of interest in your personal projects, megalomaniacal self-confidence, hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for, drawing better than Steven Zapata, or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. What's up? What's up? What the f Why is my yard oh, here? <sighs> Camera's all messed up with my new lighting situation. Hello. Hello, humans. What's going on? Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. It's very important to survive on Monday. Very important to push through. Very important to not stop. Very important to survive, to thrive, to exist, to execute, to execute and be executed. It's very important to get your head on the chopping block and get beheaded on Monday, baby. That's right, baby. I'm waving over the executioner with a big smile on my head and I'm saying, let's go, brother. He's sharpening up that knife. He's bringing it down right on my head. Schwink. Now that's how you do a Monday right. Dying today, baby. Dying today. Again, executed today, baby. Capital punishment today, baby. Come on. <laughs> hey, Joe. I had another tab open and got really scared when I heard my voice coming through the speakers. I know, I, I'm, I often surprise myself with my voice as well. Like whenever, uh, if I need to go check something on my YouTube and my, my um, you know, the like home homepage video on your YouTube channel, when that plays and it's my voice, I get like, who the hell is that idiot? Oh, it's one of these people that I hate. Can't stand dudes like this. Audio sounds fine, actually less tinny than the old apartment, good. Good. I'm glad it's even less tinny. It should be. Actually, no, I mean, where I used to stream, I had like a big soft couch in there and all that. So if it sounds better than that, that's a good sign. Hello, everybody. Tank Lover, Mar Frizz, Mihail Simeonov, K. John Yim, Tlangley, Soul, Daniels, Gib Gulbis, Gulbis. Everybody, everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. Get your drawing. 
now that I've told you to draw, if it landed with you, if you feel like, yeah, I should draw, stun. You can turn me, you can turn me off. Turn me right off. Turn me right off. Ooh, turn off my stream. Tank Lover says, hey, Steven, do you 100% trust Glaze? Yeah. Yeah, I do. It comes, from a, it comes from a university research department. If you're not gonna trust that, what are you gonna trust? Dude, the, the insane, coordinated, anti-Glaze propaganda campaign that the AI nutsos have been putting on? Ridiculous. Wild. Wild. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Makes me laugh. Hello, Abaddon. The Locus of Abaddon. Body of a locust, tail of a scorpion, head of a woman with beautiful flowing golden hair, armored, silver, glistening, opalescent with the hate of the devil. Fly, my locust, fly, bring unto them my judgment. It is time to reap the seeds of discontent. The hour is upon you. Cower, cower. Just watch your combo with Mache Cuchara. It was very interesting to listen to. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, Mache and I went, went all over the place there. Lot to cover, lot to cover. And that was a good one. Tank Lover says, yes, I saw an account that was brand new and all their tweets were shitting on that Ben guy about Glaze, criticizing him or Glaze. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I can not I can barely get worked up about it. I mean, I do get worked up. I do get upset because I'm a human being, but uh, I can't get that worked up. It's like all the, shh, dude, dude. Wait a minute, let me name this file right quick. Uh, Robotica na mano. Slippery. Rag, 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 rag. All right. I can, it's a little hard for me to get worked up about it. Cause yeah, I mean, you, you look at most of the people throwing this stuff around and <sighs> most of the people advocating for uh, robot control of the world and creativity. And yeah, they're anonymous. Their names aren't linked to their accounts. They have no work to show. They don't do anything. They're just, you know, you can't get worked up about that. You just can't get worked up about that. Especially once you, you pay attention, you know? One, the more you pay attention, the more that you see that it's um, all coordinated, you know? And once you, once you see that it's all coordinated, that also makes you take it a little less seriously, I think. It's like, oh, right, you guys, just, you guys all just plan all of this and support each other in your little, your little hoodwinks. It's pretty interesting. What are we drawing today? Beautiful girls. Isn't that obvious? Just working on my sexy ladies, as always. What is glaze? Don't worry about it, Romp. When you need it, it'll be there.
Is that Alita Battle Angel? Yep. Yeah, the character that I'm currently drawing is famous sexy anime girl Alita Battle Angel. You can tell by the, the giant eyes. Perfectly proportional body choices. The breast to hip ratio, flawless. Mathematically and scientifically designed to trigger the animal male spirit. I think that should be obvious from what's on the screen. It's a little embarrassing that I even have to explain it. You guys paying attention? Steven's mecha arc begins now. Yeah, I started drawing robots on the last stream. And... I guess I'm still having that conversation with myself. We might study a bit later. I don't really study on stream. I don't like letting people know my study secrets my incredible German secrets for locking information deep inside of my mind for easy recall. Mind palace, complicated notes, systems, stuff you guys would, you wouldn't even have the dedication necessary to take notes on the note system that I use, dude. But because this is a subject that uh, I haven't really done a lot of study on, might study, might study on stream. But you know what's also fun? Not studying. I'm just drawing. Who's texting me? It's my wife. <sighs> Give me a second. I gotta help my wife with something. Stay put. All right, all done. She just needed a kiss real quick. She was like, I'm gonna die without it. I need it right now. I was like, hon, I'm streaming right now. She's like, I don't think you understand. Trump says, nah, you won't study, bro. You too scared? You don't know anything about me. <laughs> you don't know anything about me, Romp. You have no idea what I'm capable of. If you had spent even a moment with me, you would never say crap like that. You would never be stepping to me with stuff like that, son. You'd be kissing the ring, you'd be bending the knee. You'd be like, you would study. Even better, you'd be like, we don't deserve to watch you study, Steven. We don't deserve the privilege of watching you read Wikipedia pages on mechanical principles and joint types. I'd be sitting up on my big ass throne, on some big ass dais, stroking my thick ass beard overlooking the wasteland that is my haunted seigneurial. And I'd be like, you're right, you don't deserve it, but out of the kindness of my heart, I may allow you to watch. Dinoblast says you have the custom VR Mind Palace set up in a 4D labyrinth so you can access every room through any door for optimal recall. Those are just baseline techniques for me. That's completely baseline. I mean, that's in there. Don't get me wrong. 
we have foundations of spiritual structures built on top of 4D VR mind palaces. That's just one pillar holding up my incredible mind manner. <laughs> Out of respect, I refuse to watch a goodbye. No, I don't like those legs. Oh, hold on. I didn't change the thumbnail. Let me, uh, let me update the thumbnail right quick. This has anything to do with what I'm drawing. That's not a very clear read, but whatever. Hey, Steven, what's your favorite movie you've never seen? <laughs> um, that I've never seen. Probably Jodorowsky's Dune, Alejandro Jodorowsky's version of Dune. That's probably my favorite movie that I or no one else has ever seen. Is the number in the title based on anything? Because that's a big number. That's the number of drawings I've done in my life. They've all been peaceful. It's the current count. All archived, all rubber stamped by the Library of Congress. All confirmed, categorized, and stored by the US Library of Congress. Labeled as historically significant. Pretty big teams over there, pretty big teams over there dedicated to uh, Preserving, storing, categorizing, and performing literary analysis on all of my drawings. I think currently the staff at the National Archives that is focused just on me is like, I think it's like seven full-time employees and eight interns. Eight unpaid interns. They come by every Thursday and they just pick up crates, crates of drawings. Steven, do I have your permission to use your audio clip of you trying to pronounce my surname as an intro for my YouTube channel? You do it. Many blessings to you. Any advice for drawing robots? Um, not really. Because <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I just draw, I, I don't spend a lot of time drawing robots. I think if I had to give like wise advice that I don't follow, it would be um, know the purpose of said machine. That would probably be a good idea, but I'm drawing without a purpose in mind right now. I just want to make cool shapes. This is just like abstract mech. You can't really tell what its job is or what it does. I think if you were starting out and you wanted to get into that, I would try to have a purpose in mind for most of the sketches early on. That would sort of drive you to find more interesting shapes for them and things like that. What are the things AI can't replace in concept design? Bitterness, anger, being jaded. That's the most important stuff. An AI will never be able to walk up to your AD's desk and say things like, same shit, different day, am I right, brother? An AI will never be able to grunt in despair every time notes come in. Your AD is never going to be able to walk up to an AI and be like, hey, man, yeah, we got notes back on that thing. And then you go, Jesus fucking Christ. And he's like, I know, I know, I, I know, man. I feel the same way. You want to just do it after lunch or something? Yep, yeah, yeah, just come by. We'll do it after lunch. You could make an AI do all those things, but you wouldn't think it was real. It wouldn't be believable. You need the real despair there. You got to know it's real. What do I want to be doing? Mech hands. Robot hands. I'm messing with the form language here. This is no good. The form language there is way different than the form language there. How many sketchbooks are you currently using? I think the current count of sketchbooks in my home right now is 58. You know, a sketchbook for at least one, each walkable meter in the home. So in the studio right now, like it takes me about seven paces to walk to the door of the studio. So there's seven sketchbooks lined up so that the moment incredible inspiration strikes, I can just drop to the ground like I'm doing burpees and immediately start drawing while kicking my little legs, feet up, knees bent, like a little kid, drawing on the ground, immediately. There's pencils next to each one. Full, full of range. Next to each sketchbook that's sitting on the ground, 0.5 HB mechanical pencil, 2B.9 mechanical pencil, replacement Pentel high polymer leads, kneaded eraser, Tombow zero point eraser, pigment ink pens, full set of cool gray Copic markers and replacement inks for them. Pentel pocket brush pen, broad nib calligraphy fountain pen, fine point pilot Lucina fountain pen, a 27 inch iMac, 3.6 gigahertz overclocked Intel processor, 64 gigs of RAM next to each sketchbook next to each sketchbook. 
ready to go. Radeon Pro Vega 8-bit, 8 gigabyte graphics card. Those are all getting replaced this week. Mac Studios, M2 Max chip, 32 gigabytes integrated memory on each one of those computers. There's about 56 of those laid all throughout the apartment. There's four in the bathroom. There's two in front of the toilet, depending on if I'm peeing or pooping. There's one in front of the wash basin for when I'm shaving and doing other things. And there's one in the shower. Hey, Stephen, I saw on Twitter that now criminal charges can be brought against individuals who fail to disclose use of AI-generated content to the public. Is this true? I think I know what you're talking about. I think I've seen the, the shots that you're talking about, but none of that is uh, sealed in. I need to research that. Um, I mean, those are just proposed policies and things like that. Um, as far as I know, I haven't done research, um, deep research there, but um, I think that's all just proposed policy those shots that are going around and um, a, a decision that um, a decision that strong and that aggressive, I think would take would take a while to build the political will for. I don't think they could have slipped that um, slipped that off that fast. I'm not saying it's a horrible idea. you know I don't know the details. there might be parts of it that are a very bad idea. But um, taking seriously the danger of like deep fakes and things like that, uh, I think is very important. Um, I'm just saying that I think it's unlikely that that is something that actually went through without people knowing about it. Because politicians right now are pretty, uh, don't have a lot of political will for messing with AI stuff. They're sort of dumbly waiting for a disaster to occur, which I think is stupid. But um, yeah, there's not a lot of political will to do things like that right now. No politician wants to come off as like hurting business and over-regulating and stuff like that. Which I think this is a bad situation for that since the stuff that's being put out in the world, it's like all the dangerous things that it can do, um, it's already capable of it, you know? And we just don't understand how the systems work. We don't know what they're capable of, but they're still just being plunk, plunked out there. Dude, I was on a date with my wife last night. Fuck, man. She was hitting me with the real talk, dude. We were out. We were having this great conversation. I was like, like two hours in, I was telling her, like, shit, man, I wish the microphones had been on for this one. I was like... She was hitting me with like the specific, like how all the old adages have broken down and like how um, the idea that like you can't design in a vacuum 
was like for a different time and that artists really can only survive now if they design in a vacuum because the fucking hyper-connected, hyper-pop world of the internet has made it basically impossible to be creative in this over-connected way. It's just like... It was so good. I've got to write down a bunch of stuff from that conversation and try to present it in a cohesive manner. She was blowing my mind. By the time she was done with me, I'd like lost faith in all of these uh, classic adages about design and how we make work and stuff like that. She like restructured a bunch of my brain. Good morning, Yankee. Is there any chance that AI CEO is going to have to repay damages for breaking copyright of so many people? I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like we're living through one of those things in history where um, when you look back years from now and you read the history of this time, it feels like one of those times where as you're reading the book about it, you're like, no, that happened, you know, over and over again. It just reads insane. So uh, I really don't know. I think some crazy stuff is going to happen. Stephen, public speaking course when? I don't know. I mean, if people really want it. But the thing is that to do a speaking course, I wouldn't, um, I don't think I'd teach that online. I'd have to teach that in person. It's kind of antithetical to teach a public speaking class uh, in a context where you can't make people do public speaking, right? When I taught dramatic narrative back at Art Center, that was basically a public, a public speaking class nested inside of an art and storytelling class because... A big part of that class was critiquing people's pitches and how they presented and word choice and intonation and flow. So in that context, I've kind of like secretly taught public speaking before. Maybe I could do it like that. That'd be a fun kind of a class to teach, um, sort of online, independent, or as an in-person thing as well. So much fun and easy to do, and wherever it goes, it come back to you. Wow. 
Favorite artists who are good at drawing robots and all that sort of stuff? Uh, for robots. Well, Kim Young-gi was great at robots, of course. Um, I always really liked Emerson Tung. I don't know if you know him. Uh, let me make sure I have his last name right. Yeah, Emerson Tung. Always really liked his robots. He's very popular. I'm sure you guys have seen his work a lot. I bought one of his sketchbooks at, I think it was CTN years and years ago. Got to say hi to him for a second. Stevano, Stevano. Were you ever afraid that some of your students would get stuck in mimicking your style? And if that was the case, what would you say to those? Um, I don't think I've had a student so far get stuck mimicking my, my style. Um, I think that my style for the most part is very frightening and unappealing. And it's a very select group of people who wanna draw like that. Most of my students, um, most of my students I think come to me to get their fucking minds fixed. Get their brain fixed. Their brain is all wrong. They just want to hear the words, the magic spells that will cure their brains. I don't think most of my students are really after drawing like me, you know, which I think is good. I, I prefer that personally. I think there's, there's a part of it that's like they may want to draw at my level, but I'm not sure they want to draw like me. You know, most artists, you know, want to make work that like people will hang in their home. <laughs> and that's not really the kind of work I, I do. Like there's no one in my family who has any of my pieces hanging in their living rooms or something like that. That's not true, my sister does, but you know. Everybody else, it's like, what are you gonna hang? And you're like, geez, this is a scary fucking picture to have over the fireplace, what the? <laughs> I would hang your art at church. Yeah, I mean, if you can hook that up, like do it. Like get the Pope on the line. Let's get me, let's get me patronized by the, the Medici's, dude. Let's get me in there. Start painting some icons and I got you. Yeah, I got you right here. Just get like a, get like a weird Mary. You gotta get really stylized with it. Damn, it's so hard to, it's so hard to get your habits out of your hand. That like icon style is so specific. No, see, eyes are too reasonable there. I 
No, 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 but the baby's got to look like little adults, right? How do you do the little Christ child hair? Okay, confirmed. Icon style is very difficult. Very confirmed right now. Heavily confirmed right now, son. Medieval diaper. Nailed it, dude. Nailed it. Put it right on the Greek Orthodox church right there. Bro, it's ready. It's ready for church. It's ready for worship. Just put in the archway, son. Ready to go, baby. Nailed it. Perfect. Only get him more perfect. Pfft, dude. Dude. Nailing it right now, champs. Holy crap. Door right there. Happy worshipers. Here's me with a big, there's my ears. Just counting the money, baby. Down in the money. Here's my big pile of money. Tight. Count in the money. I can't go. I can't go in here because because of, of all the heresy. Because of all the heresy. Yeah. Calling the Pope right now. Don't tell my mom I did that. She'd get too excited, her heart would explode. Do not tell my mom I drew that. Iho, you draw La him on stream? Iho, you draw the Christ child on stream? Mi Jesus? Decorate the robot with Christian iconology. Catholic robot confirmed. G 
Jesus worshiping robot confirmed. Yo, my crosses are weak, son. Oh, you didn't see them being in relief, did you? You thought they were just printed on? You thought they were just printed on there in relief, son. It's revealed on the silhouette, my brother. Lord, deliver us from these born silhouettes. I walked right into the house of the devil and I saw that his silhouettes were born. Look, I know you can't. You can't. You can't do that. Look, I'm just code switching to religious fervor, all right? Don't make it more than what it is. <laughs> Don't make it more than what it is. Of course the devil has boring silhouettes. The, de the devil's just obsessed with, he just wants corners. He just wants corners so he can manifest. That's all he wants. Of course his silhouettes are gonna get boring. Because janky silhouettes that don't make tight 90 degree corners, he can't manifest. Well, of course he's got a problem with it. Hey Steven, I just recently joined your Patreon. What's the best way to onboard myself to your Discord? It should have automatically added you. If it didn't automatically add you, just um, send, me a, send me a DM on Patreon and I'll send you a, a link. You can click the link and then um, that'll get you on. Some people, based on their Discord settings, um, the automatic ad doesn't work. Steven, what's your favorite comedian or YouTube personality that makes you laugh? I don't laugh at anything anymore. I'm Pagliacci, man. Nothing's funny. Not in the world we live in. It's unrelenting despair for me, baby. Can't forget the facts to laugh long enough. Can't forget the facts long enough to laugh. That's my situation. That's the world I'm living in. Bye, Yankee. Enjoy your drawing. They're going to make it rain wafers and wine on you for that drawing. Stacking Catholic cash sky high. Hell yeah, man. Doing communion daily. Get in that communion daily. Gonna ride that forever. Catholic in good standing. How I wish I could draw all the time. There's just so much schoolwork. I'm so jealous. I mean, I don't get to draw all the time either. <laughs> I do get to draw more than most people, but the world being what it is. I mean, even me, I still find myself thinking constantly, damn, I wish I could draw more.
A lot of stuff is required to run the machinery of your life. Steven, can you make a course to teach us how to be sexy? Yeah. That'll be my most expensive course. That one's gonna be, yeah, steep, steep price on that course. This stream is actively distracting me from coding. So good job. Now I want to draw. <laughs> Drawing wins. Coding defeated. Coding defeated. Drawing wins. The end of coding. Coding terminated. Coding destroyed as a cultural artifact. Only drawing remains. The course ends with Steven Fee picks. Stop it, Mel. Damn it. Damn it, man. Sick of y'all. Stop trying to get pictures of my feet. Stop trying to get pictures that have my feet with the toes all squinched up while in the same shot you can see my blushing face. Stop trying to get that. Y'all are sick. Stop trying to get pics of me walking around in my bare feet and I'm talking to somebody and like one foot is sort of like resting on top of the other. Sort of like a little nervous, like self-soothing. And like one of the toes like hooks over one of the other toes like this. Stop trying to get that photo. You guys are disgusting. Ant Wolf says, careful AI bros will use this clip out of context to say you hate technology and believe in art supremacy. <laughs> I'm an art supremacist. They don't. They don't care about me. They ain't gonna clip anything. I don't engage enough for them to be interested. They're just like classic, like middle school bully energy. Like if you just don't believe in arguing with people online <laughs> and don't do it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've said or how much of a thorn you've been in their side. They just don't, they, you drain, you drain them. They melt, nothing left to do, nothing left to say. Shadowversity cared? Yeah, I mean, he didn't. Re I don't think he did. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think he cared about that other video. He doesn't care about me. He cared about the video that I made and the arguments in it, um, and then the video that he was sort of supporting that was uh, trying to rebut my arguments. He didn't care about me. Pissing me off though. I'm about to challenge Shad to a sword fight, dude. I'm about to stand up, be like on guard, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> Choose your weapons. Feeling pretty good about my odds against a shot in a sword fight. <laughs> I 
He's never going to see it coming, man. Quick repost. Done. We're done here, right? Art wins. Every online argument should be resolved with a sword duel. Be careful. There were eras where that was literally <laughs> how people resolved things. It resulted. People are, are genuinely willing to go there. If the, if the cultural zeitgeist is just right, people will go there. So watch out. Hold on. Got to fix my microphone. We had a long time of that. Damn it, I never remember what way I'm supposed to turn this frickin' knob. All right, the other way. I'm sorry if this is super loud. Nope, other way. Just give me a... I don't know how I ruined this. All right, give me a second. Righty tidy lefty loosey. I know, but my uh, I always the knob the lever is always on the other side, so it's reverse, and I never intuitively remember which way I'm supposed to go. Are feet considered vulgar by AI? They should be. Knowing you guys, knowing you degenerates, should be considered vulgar. I know what you guys are getting up to. I know what you guys are getting up to. You can't trick me. should be considered. I highly doubt all the AI party boys will still be using it five years from now. The rest of us will be drawing likely for as long as we can. I mean, there's definitely going to be some... Um, I, I. It's actually a little sad to me. Like, It's going to work like everything else, no matter what a big portion of them are going to fall off just because they were into it. And then they're going to move on to the next thing. They're going to leave AI art behind, especially because, you know, it's going to devalue art and people are going to realize what it is more and more. So there's going to be less and less energy about like, right, great, you type that in. So a huge amount of people are going to fall off from it um, and remove it sort of the current rush of vitality that it has. The sad part is that the damage will have already been done. So it won't even be the vibrant AI community that they dream of. Um, but they will have, after they leave it behind, uh, in the void of that community, they still will have damaged the industry, damaged the perception of art, um, lowered prices, lowered rates. It'll be, uh, yeah, kind of sad. That's kind of sad. And by kind, I mean deeply, deeply sad. And the, the worst part of it is just how banal that all is. It's like so 
deeply low energy, all of that, you know? It's like violently uninteresting. Like I'm vomiting from how banal it is right now. Steven, is your form from imagination course good for beginner artists? Should I be better at it to make the most of it? It's a foundations course. It's fine to take it as a beginner. It, I, what I usually tell people is um, if you're, there's like beginner and then there's like you really haven't spent any time drawing. And I would advise most people if they're new to drawing in a true capacity I don't think you should take my course or anybody else's, really. I think um, you should go through a, a long period, maybe a year or two, where you just fall in love with drawing and just move the pencil and get used to doing it in a natural way and all of that before you put on, because inevitably any kind of system or way of drawing or instruction makes you seize up a little bit and makes you draw unnaturally. And I think that that's restrictive for a lot of people. Um, if you have that period behind you, yeah, my courses, I mean, the, the f it's all geoforms for the first like eight assignments, more than that. Um, it's perfectly fine to take as a beginner. Just, you know, it, it's, it is a rendering course. It's, it's about creating the illusion of form. So if that fundamental is on the menu for you and you want to learn that, then you, then you can take it no matter what level you're at. Because even people who have been drawing for many years and have a lot of facility, um, who might be considered intermediate or advanced, if they've never done it the way that I'm explaining it before, or if they've just, no one's ever forced them to sit and render a sphere, um, they'll be drawing like a beginner again. It'll mess them up. I mean, it, it's amazing how many people have been drawing for years and years and years and trying to work through much more complicated issues, and they've just never rendered a sphere. And then they try it and they're like, oh my God, I got completely defeated by it. I, I, I actually had no idea how to sort of break things down to the most objective level. Um, and they sort of discover like, damn, I actually don't know how to render a sphere or it's much trickier than I thought it would be. And um, it requires a lot more precision and, and planning. Plus one to that, going back and sculpting primitives in clay is much harder than most complex or organic forms. A perfectly round spheroid or a pyramid is something that requires more than expected. Yeah. They made us do that back in design school. 
when I was at Art Center twice in two separate classes, we had to sculpt perfect geoforms. In, in one class, we had to sculpt them out of wood. Uh, perfect sphere, perfect, was it? Perfect sphere, perfect cone, perfect cylinder, perfect cube. So turning them on lathes, the sphere was a nightmare. And then you were just graded on a form, like they, they'd take calipers to the sphere and just like stick it all around and the calipers needed to be flawless, needed to stay the same. And you lost points based on how much the calipers changed as they sort of fitted them around the sphere. Same with the cylinder, they would put the calipers at the top and slide the calipers down the length of the, the cylinder. And if there was any friction as the calipers went up and down, points off. So we had to do the full set of geoforms once in wood. And then we had another class, study models. And we had to make perfect geoforms out of uh, foam, foam products. So you, the sphere was made out of foam that you had to sort of carve by hand. And uh, people cheated and just bought foam spheres. But even those, the ones you buy from craft stores are not perfect. So you had to make them perfect. But you're supposed to carve a sphere out of foam, like peach foam, um, which is like harder stuff than normal craft foam. Uh, at, or foam core. So you'd have to make a perfect cylinder out of foam core. You'd cut the discs at the top, bond paper to them. And the worst was perfect cube out of foam core. God, I wanted to kill myself. Perfect cube out of foam core is so hard. You had to unwrap it, lay it all out on the foam core, measure it perfectly, cut 45 degrees. So all of the lines in the cube so that it would fold neatly and it wouldn't have just stupid joints when you looked at it, you had to cut 45 degree bevels on all of the internal joints so that when you folded it up, it just had flawless edges all around. It, 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 it does teach you control. It really does teach you control, discipline, and uh, it also teaches you how to hate your life for sure. Sounds awful, LOL. <laughs> that sounds so dumb. Yeah, well, I was actually, they stopped making people do that right after I left. I remember when me and my cohort, when we found out that people didn't have to do that anymore, we were like, one semester off. But you know, that's also why I'm fucking special forces, art special forces, you know? That's why I'm fucking SEAL Team 6 of drawing and there'll never be another. Age of degradation, the decadence of Rome, lack of discipline, lack of focus. The culture isn't ready to support even a, a disciplined person in becoming a great artist anymore. Utterly impossible for you. Feel lucky that I was the last generation to uh, have it be possible to be a great drafts person. Very, very fortunate. I'm sure you guys will invent new cool stuff to do. Like you could be like a you have an awesome job being like a, a TikTok vigilancer, like carefully analyzing AI deep fakes and saying like, I know this one's fake and then making 50 bucks a day doing that or whatever. Pretty cool. You guys will have a lot of fun doing that. Very desirable work. Artists love suffering confirmed. They can't get enough of it. That's right. Seal Team 6 of art. That's me. I 100% mean it. Totally sincere. I'm going in. I'm raiding the bunker. This tablet stylus is my M16. Art Center was buds, man. I survived Hell Week.
That's why I'm capable of more than you ever will be. I've seen the fields, endless fields of steers. Everyone remember draftsmanship peaked with Steven? That's right. That's why my uh, 2013, not 2013, 2023 sketchbook that I'm going to publish is called Tips from the Master. No tips in it, just the drawings. It's like the drawings themselves are tips enough. Just check it out. That's how you do it. Let me show you how it's done. Tips from the Master by Supreme Grand Master of Draftsmanship, Stephen Zapata. You guys ever hear the story that um, Frank Lloyd Wright had to give testimony in court and the court asked him to introduce himself and he said, my name is Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm the greatest living architect. And then after that, uh, one of his friends said, Frank, that very cute, but you didn't need to say that. And then Frank said, yes, I did. I was under oath. Drive-by commenter says, maybe the jobs of the AI future will be just as or more banal than white-collar work, and people will still dream of monetizing their traditional art passion anyways. Um, hold on, my wife's texting me. Ah. <sighs> Um, what the heck was I reading? Maybe the jobs of the AI future will be just as or more banal than white collar work and people will still dream of monetizing their traditional art passions anyway. Um, I don't think any of this is going to work out. <laughs> I don't think any of this is going to work out. I mean, this is, we're completely ass backwards. 
I mean, it's just you got to you got to do what you need to take care of yourself and figure out who you are and um you got to live a weird life and you got to get out this um what's inside of people's hearts the incentives the way culture works i mean it, it's they're they're never going to our culture is not prepared to support the creative spirit it just isn't. You're going to, if you want to, if you want to make your creativity and the creative spirit that you have inside a big part of your life, you've got to take it upon yourself and break out of the strictures and the incentive structures and what other people are telling you. And you've just got to figure it out on your own. You've got to get out. You can't, you can't be going along with what everybody's doing and how culture is going to react to random things like technology, just our dumb, dumb culture, just pulling technological balls out of the urn of possibilities, waiting to find the one that destroys the earth. Like that is not a hospitable environment for art making, for being creative, for understanding yourself. There, you, can't, you can't find out who the hell you are in that context. You have no idea what you are. You're just, you're just a, you're, the unallocated parts of your brain are just uh, money-making real estate for people who have no idea who you are, who are just putting these rapacious, absurd, dystopic systems out into the world. Like, get out. Disconnect from the internet and all this crap and, and, and social media and everything and Develop a small community. Talk to five people. Just talk to five people. And you'll be much happier. You'll have a much more cogent understanding of yourself and reality and the world. I mean, get off this stuff. God damn. I have a YouTube channel. I don't, I don't have the YouTube app on my phone. I don't have YouTube studio on my phone. I don't look at my numbers. I don't have Instagram on my phone. I put it on when something comes up. I... I, I do this because this sitting here drawing and talking with people in like a, this kind of a way and reacting to questions, this feels good. This feels healthy, not perfectly healthy. You know, there's still a distance that needs to be made, but it's better than all the other crap. And all the other stuff I experience as truly, deeply, a net negative, useless. Get it out of your life. Get it out of your goddamn life. They are poisoning your fucking brain. <laughs> you're poisoning your fucking brain. And trust me, I, I, I have enough students and I've talked to enough people about this that I mean it when I say they're poisoning you. I mean, the number one problem that artists have these days is that even if they have the time, even if they have the money, even if they have, they can say like, I'm going to take these two hours to work on my art. They can't work on their art. The number one problem that artists have is that even if they have the time and the resources and the ability, they can't bring themselves to work on their favorite thing in the world. Does that sound normal? That's not for no reason. Of course there's reasons. They're poisoning your fucking brain for the sole purpose of making money. They're not doing it on purpose. It's just that these people, are the, the technology and, and these big systems, it's all being created delusionally. They think that they're inventing this stuff and that they have control over it and that they can sort of nudge it with incentives and make it good. It's like they're not. They're stumbling upon configurations of technology, culture, and people. And when they open the doors to an area of that, this idea of virus of something like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, it just comes flooding through the door with a few variants and then it's just survival of the fittest. It's like if we, like Instagram Prime comes flooding through the door along with Instagram A, B, C, D, E, and they compete survival of the fittest style for the one that's fittest and the way that our culture is designed, the fitness is determined by how does it make the most money? It makes them impervious to editing, to changing, to fixing, or to making the world a better place. It's garbage. It's a dumpster fire. And they'll never, they can't be fixed. They can't be fixed. <laughs> get, get away from it all.
And AI will just be another part of it. The AI will just be another part of it. Abide in silence. Take time to breathe. Sit in a chair and do goddamn nothing. Take all that crap off your phone. Take it off of everything. Escape. Make it a priority to run. <laughs> Make it a priority to run as fast as you can. As fast as you can. I, I, I feel so lucky that I grew up right on the cusp of the internet that I didn't have it early on, that I saw it arrive, that I lived through it showing up, that I, I had an experience. I, I feel so lucky that I was just able to work in college, that I was just able to focus on making work. I feel unbelievably lucky. It wasn't my discipline. It wasn't that I'm some hard as nails guy. I, just my lucky cultural position that in college, none of this stuff was big or important or controlled the world yet. And I just got to, it was easy for me to just stretch my arms and wake up every day and just draw and study and read and think for 14 hours at a clip without really being distracted, not having anything to fucking distract me. I wouldn't have been able to do it in this era. I really don't think so. I, 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 I thank... I thank my lucky constellation of roiling atoms for that every goddamn day. Every goddamn day. Do you, feel, do you feel as if making that the end of art video has put you in a position where people look up to you for answers, kind of like the art spokesperson? Do you feel any pressure or responsibility? Baby boy, people are already looking up to your man for answers long before the end of art, an argument against image AIs. People were already flooding Stephen's inbox with millions of requests for insightful wisdom, for shamanistic guidance through the chaos of the world. They were asking me to channel the secret truth of the universe, to boil it down. People already wanted Stephen to be their mushroom trip, their ayahuasca. That was already happening. It was already happening. Yeah, it definitely made it a little worse, for sure. But um, I, I, I don't, I rescind, the, um, I rescind the title of art spokesperson or anything like that. And um, if you've listened to my, my YouTube videos or heard me talk long enough, um, I think everybody here knows that based on my principles, I have to rescind uh, anything like that. Any sort of, any position like that makes no sense to me because, yeah, my core values just don't allow for that. Um, Art is completely structureless. There's no, you, you, who would I be spokespersoning for? Like everybody's art practice is different. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's the way that, what they want out of art, the way they're going to use it, everything. Everything is completely different from artist to artist. You, you couldn't, you couldn't make a group of a hundred artists who really have like a, a cogent agreement on their baseline values about what art is and isn't and what they're trying to get out of it. And that's the way it should be because that is what allows the art practice to do just about anything for any person who needs anything. That's what makes it miraculous and special. But it does also, in my opinion, from my ground, ground truth understanding of art, make the idea that there would be a spokesperson or someone who speaks for everybody completely it doesn't work. It's illogical. So I don't, I don't dare to say that I speak 
uh, for anybody else. Um, I speak for myself. And um, hold on, I got to read something. One second. All right. I got to put that on. Do not disturb. A lot of scheduling going on lately. A lot of scheduling. Huh, is hard to be an influencer? Is it? You better not be saying I'm an influencer. I am not an influencer. I am not an influencer. I try to always remind people I try to talk nonstop about how important it is to make up your own mind and be an independent person and remove limiting and controlling factors that you have sort of taken on without scrutiny. I want to de-influence. I don't tell people how to draw. I've got options for that. If for some reason they think what I got might be something very much of interest to them, but I don't throw that out there all willy nilly. You got to really choose to get into that. I want to be a D influencer. <laughs> Steven, how about sketching a Martian tripod? I did that on the last stream for a split second, something that people said looked like the tripods from More of the World. Ah, that's close enough. But you have to influence to influence people into believing into de-influence. Hopefully I can just make a cogent enough argument that, see, I don't, when I think of influencer, I think of someone who is sort of charming you with their lifestyle enough that without even asking yourself if you believe in what they're doing, you just kind of want it. That's what influencer means to me. I don't consider it influ influencing or being an influencer to present my arguments uh, in as cogent a way as possible and to have that land with someone like, oh shit, I think he's right. That's different. That's not influencing. That's just what society is based on. have a dumb meeting to go to now, but thank you for the wisdom and good times in this AM. Enjoy, Bougie, and good luck in your meeting. <laughs> Nick Raviola says, some of us paid good money to be told by you how to draw. Yeah, but you know what I mean, Nick. It's like, 
I don't put out there like as the face of this channel, like let me show you how to draw. This is the right way to draw. Like, that's just me personally, I have no interest in that. And I think people take that too seriously. You know, I've spent too much of my time as a teacher deprogramming that stuff. So I don't do that. Um, and um, if you come to me to draw, if you pay good money for me to teach you how to draw, uh, almost invariably the people, everyone who has come to me for that has already heard me say like, you got to deprogram stuff and you need to find your own way and um, you need to be careful about what you're taking on. So it's like, I'll teach you how to draw if we're, if we're going to have a very serious, like controlled discussion about it. But my number one priority is always to, um, I don't want to put bad influences out there and have people who are new or aren't really thinking it through, just have them take that stuff too seriously and carry the burden of that for a long time. I hate that stuff. My little pup is, she's dreaming. I got her bed right next to me here today. She's been chilling with me all stream. He's here. It's too much glare on my phone. See you there? Out cold? See that? She's out cold. <laughs> Joe says the fact that this stream and every video isn't sponsored by G Fuel, G Fuel is a pretty big indicator that Steve isn't a social media influencer. All right, I get, look, I reserve the right to uh, go back on all of my principles to get one of those fridges full of G Fuel. I'm just kidding. I don't want that. Too old for that. Can't be drinking G Fuel. I do get messages constantly from companies and stuff like that asking me to review things or wanting to send me free stuff or st some stuff that's relevant, other stuff that just is completely irrelevant. And I just, I say no to everything. I just say no to everything. It's the same devil, baby. Steven, do you have a naturally good voice or did you take singing lessons? What voice are you talking about? Do you mean this one? What don't speak. Well, I know what you... Uh, don't speak. I know what you're thinking. And I don't need your freedom. Without the good hats. No, 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 don't speak. I know what you're thinking. I don't need your feelings. I know you're good. I know you're good. I know you're good. You mean that one? You mean that voice? That's all natural. That's all natural, homie. That's just pure genetic power. That's all that is. I've got. I've got the genes of an eight-year-old little girl who's singing Ave Maria at a funeral. That's my baseline biological construction. My baseline bio biological construction is same genes as a nine-year-old girl gifted with an impossible voice who's singing Ave Maria at a funeral. That's me, that's me at my core. Everything else, everything else is built on top of that. Everything else is built on top of that. Layered on top. Everything else I've added, constructed, on my own, through my sheer willpower. But baseline, nine-year-old girl singing Ave Maria at a funeral. Dude, my, my wife, what the, all these messages. I 
possible. What the heck is happening? You're hearing world-class singing ability. That's what that was. The truth is, if you pay enough money for promotion, they will brand you as the greatest voice of all. Not joking. Dude, I, I know it's powerful. I don't, you gotta understand, I'm not confused. I know what I got. I know the voice is incredible. I know it's unstoppable. I know what's in there. I'm not confused. Where'd my background music go? There we go. Hi, pup. I know you don't like when I sing. I know that. I know you don't like that. I'm sorry I woke you up. I didn't mean to. Go back to bed. I, I woke her up. I shouldn't have done that. That was rude. That's a very rude thing to do to a dog. That's a very rude thing to do to a dog. They only have 16 hours a day to sleep. That's very rude to interrupt their sleep. Every minute counts. I guess you gotta think you're the best to be the best. Well, to be the best, we gotta pass the test. We gotta get it on the stage to the top of the mountain. You're the best in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They say you're the best and the best you don't know. They say you're the best. Well, come on, let it shine. It's always bad when Tenacious D enters the, the memory again, because now Tenacious D is all I'll be able to... Tenacious D will just be living rent-free in my head for the next week now. Dude, did you fart? Did you really do that? You farted under there? You're gassing me. What the fuck was that? We've had this discussion. Oh, it's foul. Mm. Oh. Oh. Damn. Oh my God. It smells like a fish market and sex while camping. I mean, just disgusting. Come on, man. Get, the, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Oh, it's, it's cookie time. I gotta give her her cookie. Karma for waking her up? Yeah, I know. Oh my God, you like the D? I just love you more now, Steven. Who doesn't love the D?
I mean, come on. I was a I was a 15 year old boy when when Tenacious D hit. I mean, 15 year old boy, New York City. When Tenacious D becomes a thing, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna miss it. You're gonna be a fan. It's like I, I didn't know you could sing about penises. This is an interesting discovery. I didn't know you could do that. Can you sing some for us? Well, <clears throat> with <clears throat> with karate, I'll kick your ass from here to Tiananmen Square. Oh yeah, motherfucker, I'm gonna kick your fucking derriere. Yeah, yeah. You broke the rules. Now rip out all your pubic hair. You motherfucker. Oh, I didn't I didn't lower my gain. Apologies everybody. I totally blew out your speakers. Levels were still fine, weirdly enough. Good, good news. Have you seen the guy who trained AI on Carla's glazed painting? Yeah, I mean, it's just image to image. That ain't what it's about. A lot of stupid stuff going around right now. Glaze isn't meant to protect against uh, image to image or that's not its that's not the function it was designed for i believe those functionalities are being worked on but that's not its function the first the first iteration of glaze is more to protect from um like what happened to greg rutkowski where a significant portion of your work is scraped, people can summon out the style by invoking your name in, um, in a publicly released model. That's the baseline and that's the first thing it was released for. Glaze was not meant, or at least this first version of Glaze was not meant to protect against image to image attacks or fine tuning. And they know that. That's a bad word, Stephen. Ooh, it's a very bad word. Ooh, it's a very bad word.
Joe says, what's your favorite dish? I'm not going to cook it, but I'll order it from Zanzibar. Yeah, obviously, obviously, Fuck Her Gently is going to be the, the hit amongst 15-year-old boys. Of course, when you've never had sex and are horrified of it, <laughs> you're going to love a song like Fuck Her Gently. Do you like garlic? Love garlic. Can't get enough garlic. I'm eating garlic right now. You can't see it, but I'm eating it. Do you see that AI will develop to be able to generate, to generate stylized line art drawings? Uh, like, do I think it will be able to, or have I seen an example? I've seen examples. It'll be able to do that. It'll be able to do that. And people will do it because life is chaos and existence is insane. And we live in an entropic flow of heat transfer that will not end until the universe squeaks out of interesting existence when the final black hole hawking radiations away the last of its mass. That's why that's going to happen. And time will stop because there's no more heat transfer to generate an arrow of time. It's going to be great. Don't speak, I know what you're thinking. This guy needs backwards legs for sure. Based garlic enjoyer, you know it. They already made AI that is faking creative process from beginning to finish. Yep, yeah, yeah. That was actually pretty early on. Yeah, it's definitely possible to fake process videos with AI. There hasn't been like a, a cohesive product for it yet, but it can do that. AIs will be able to fake uh, layers and Photoshop documents and things like that. It's all on the table if we do nothing. Do you love art or don't you defend it? That's why, um, that's why I'm the only, only kind of artist who's safe. I'm the only person you can trust. As it stands, you can rest assured that I am real and that I'm making this art. And it's all got time stamps and autobiographically cogent. I'll be the last generation of anyone that you'll be able to trust is actually good at drawing. And I feel very honored by that. The rest of you, huge trouble, huge trouble. You guys are screwed. They stole that from you. No one will ever, ever, ever believe you're good at art. Me, I'm good. Art Center Special Forces, SEAL Team 6 of Drawing, et cetera, et cetera. We're coming in, flashbang. Put your hands in the fucking air, put your hands in the fucking air. You guys, screwed. Can't prove it, no one will believe you. The better you are, the more inclined people will be to not believe you. Every little bit of improvement will only make it harder to make people believe that you're that good at drawing. Me? Clear. Totally clear. You guys? Screw. Big, big problem. Big problem.
So, you know, stand up for yourself if you have any, if you have any inner steel. If not, it's cool. Just lay down. Just lay down forever. Are you using references? Nope. I'm the best. It matters that I don't use references. I'm the bomb. Yep, it's pretty crazy. I can just draw like this out of my head with nothing open. And it's easy and it's fun. I can put on a show while I do it. How crazy is that? God, I'm the fucking best. God, I'm the fucking best. And I'm rewarded handsomely for it as well. And I just came in at the right time that people will believe me. <laughs> Those damn AI bros, they completely, they close the door to the life that I'm living for the rest of you. Close the door. Very rude of them to do that. Damn. They just did it without asking permission too. Just stole all your stuff. Ruined your futures. Poisoned your brains. Damn. <laughs> Steve needs money for G Fuel and better help. You're killing me, Joe. It's the worst if you want to do anything creative. I know. They really, they really are. They shouldn't have done that. Hey, you guys shouldn't have done that. Hey, wait a second. You guys really shouldn't have done that. They really should not have done that. That's why I'm mad, baby. I don't like what they took from you. Defend yourselves, on guard. Steve, what cartoons did you love as a kid? Usual stuff for my generation. Dragon Ball Z, Gundam. Dragon Ball Z, Gundam, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Cardcaptor Sakura, Pokemon. Did I say Dragon Ball? See what else? What else? Sailor Moon. Hey, Emma, what's up? What about the Cartoon Network classic? Um, I watch a bunch of Cartoon Network stuff too. Uh, 
I mean, I watched tons of it. God, how could I even list it? You watched tons of cartoons when you were a kid. I guess I didn't even think of listing like Bugs Bunny because it's just like, I just kind of assume it's a, it's sort of like ambient background for everyone's childhood. But yeah, I guess I should list it. I've probably seen every Bugs Bunny cartoon. Well, you know, of the classics. Daffy D Duck, Bugs the Bunny, Pork T Pig. You all know Bugs Bunny, right? He's the rabbit who's always talking about communist interpretations of capitalism's shortcomings. You know him. Blacklisted in the McCarthy era. You all know Bugs Bunny. Sure you all know who I'm talking about. His radical getty -a friend, Daffy Duck. Pyromaniac. Big on getting people to fight proxy wars for him and Bugs' ideology. You all know. Have you seen Courage the Cowardly Dog? That was, that show was a trip. <laughs> that show was a trip. Ain't never seen anything like that since. That is some fucked up stuff. Courage the Cowardly Dog was, that's real deal stuff right there. Nick says, well, I just finished a piece all in pencil and it looks nice, too bad, no scanner. Oh, you gotta get a scanner. You gotta get a scanner. Good job, Nick. Congratulations. Awasim says, what qualities should new concept artists focus on in their portfolio with the advent of AI these days? Singing ability, no doubt. Very, very important. Um, I have to be perfectly honest with you. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna speak out of my ass on that one because the way things are online, um, you might actually spend the next two years doing what I said, even though I thought about it for four seconds. So. I'm going to be honest with you and say, I don't know, and leave it at that. I think it's very risky to pretend to know right now. We've got to see what happens more before we can form a, a good opinion on that, I think. I think it's always a safe bet to try to focus on being as creative as possible. In lieu of having anything more specific to say, I think that that's a general note that everybody could use. Don't just focus on making stuff that you've seen in other people's portfolios or drawing well and things like that. I know it's hard. I know that's hard to do. I found it hard. You know, I just obsess over drawing well and just like seeing the the 
very focused on just the end, just the end product. But um, that's not the right way to go. It's not the, the smartest way to go. Nurture your creativity. Like get better at being creative. Go be weird. <laughs> I really mean it. Go, go read, for the love of God. Spend a lot of time reading. Do research. Find out strange things. Uh, spend time with weird people. Have strange conversations. Dress funny if it makes you feel better. I don't know. Go be a bohemian loser. Go move to some more artistic part of the world if, if you need to. Just all of that stuff I think will pay dividends in the long run. Go to museum exhibits. Go to strange events. Just go be weird. Don't sit there obsessing about like what Photoshop layer should I use to do a costume design or something like that. Go be a very strange person. Gab links with 25 PLN. My art block is cured. I used to draw abstract because I was afraid, embarrassed to draw the things that I really wanted. Now I draw what I like. Fuck yeah. Nice, man. Nice gab links. That's awesome. What a big thing. Nice, dude. Nice gab links. Nice. Got him. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Great success for you. Increíble. Dude, tight. Nice job, Gablinks. Gablinks. J Blinks. G A Blinks. G A Blinks. Really tight. Nice dude. Be like Dolly and pet an anteater. Don't speak. Know you're petting my anteater. And I can hear you petting her. Sounds vaguely, vaguely sexual. Petting an anteater. Is it weird that I think that sounds vaguely sexual? Something's up there. Something about the uh, prehensile proboscis. Just has a sort of troubling sensuality to it, you know? The long, motile tongue. I don't know, man. Something's up. Mar Frizz says, I'm being weird since forever. Nailed it. Yeah. You got you to gotta be a weird person. Do not be lulled to sleep by society and culture. They will dim you. Do not get worn smooth by the world.
I gotta study like a piston arrangements. You know, couplings, up gearing, down gearing, stuff like that. But you know what? I also know that as soon as I study all that stuff and I get it in my head, and I'm like, nice, then I won't want to draw robots anymore. <laughs> I'll be like, right, on to the next thing, and I'll never use it. <laughs> I'll never use the info. Good morning, Steven. Hello, dark dank doodles. Suyash says, hey, Steven, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm drawn. If I'm drawn, I'm good. If I'm drawn, everything's A-OK. -okay. Steven, what do you think of the concept of live your art? Here many artists advocate having your art be reflected in everything in your life, such as how you dress. Well, obviously I agree with that. I mean, look at how I'm dressed. I mean, this yellow t-shirt, it aligns perfectly with my artistic outlook. Um, yeah, I do think you should live your art, but um, I think, all right, look, this might, be, this might be a little controversial with others, but you know, just to give my viewpoint, like the, the, the way you dress part I think that's a little shallow. You know, I do agree you should live your art, but there's a difference between living your art and living an aesthetic, you know, living a brand. And um, I don't, I, I try to live my art, but that's not manifest in, you know, I'm not trying to wear shirts that look like my drawings or something like that. What would I be wearing fucking Ed Hardy or something like that all the time, which I used to wear as a teenager, but not because it looked anything like my art. Um, it's, you try to live your art. I think you should try to live your art in the sense that your art should be aligned with your base values, you know, that you should, you should understand why you want to be creative, why you want to make things, what, what is important about that should align how you prioritize it in your life. And then living your art is actually making, actually making that time, making that place for it in the world, prioritizing it the way that you think you should, um, sharing it with others, if that's part of it, um, doing it from the place that feels right to you. So if you don't believe in the commercial side of it, don't do it from the commercial side. If you do believe in the commercial side and, you know, bring it into the commercial side of things, just going deeper with it. I think that part of living your art, uh, I do agree with. I do think that's real. Wait, Steven, is the background music on? I can't hear. It is. It's in there. I'm just a loud fucker. MP Archive says, hi, I'm new to your channel and I'm amazed with all your artwork. Thank you, MP Archive. You have excellent taste. I just want to put that out there. You've already betrayed that you have fantastic taste in art. I think everybody here agrees with that. We can all see that MP Archive has a good head on their shoulders. Uh, a lot of um, inferior people would have looked at this incredible work and just uh, sort of looked past it or not had it make an impact. And it's indicative of the quality of your unconscious and subconscious that that didn't happen for you, that your brain recognized that it was looking at the finest drawings ever made in the history of the world. Uh, moving on to the rest of your comment. I'm amazed with all your artwork. I wanted to ask what your process to be able to draw mechs without any reference. Not really a lot of process on these. I'm just sketching happily. Um, I don't usually draw mechs. Uh, I usually draw more organic things, much more anatomical things. Um, I, I wish I had a better answer for you on process. This is just pure, my background ability to handle forms in three-dimensional space and to just make up what makes shapes and forms look cool. And there's no real process for that. The process for that is, you know, 30 years long or something like that. Um, I'll be sure to mention it if I start onloading a more particular process, but really I'm just sketchbooking right now. If you wanna draw mechs well from without reference, you need to bring up your comfort drawing things just without reference, which is almost a mechanical function at a certain point, there's a certain initial uh, inertia that you need to get over where your body will just resist. It'll always be looking for ways to soothe the discomfort of a drawing come out poorly. So 
get over that hump and then look at a lot of mechanics and robots and um, real world things, you know, cars, tanks, motorcycle parts, anything that has some uh, form language that you like. And you can copy them to get it into your head. That works very well, but you don't actually even need to do that. You just need to observe them very carefully and remember the things that you're seeing and then bring that in to the work when you're working from imagination. But again, that's a long, if that's a process, it's a long process. It's just something to do, you know, going forward. Yeah, when I hear from artists, it's often been from a rather aesthetic point of view, which I agree feels a little shallow. Yeah, I, I mean, it also depends what kind of artist you are. Like, if you're trying to be a fine artist in like the, you know, very hip contemporary art, like gallery scene, that might be more important, less as like a genuinely artistic, like real thing. It's, it might be more important just as a branding thing, because a lot of that job if we look at it um, as sort of cold and clinically and a bit cynically as possible, a lot of that job is sort of mingling at galleries and openings and uh, you know restaurants and meetings and things like that. And in those contexts, you might wanna dress that way just to communicate that you're a weirdo who's open to conversation that you're trying to get discovered. And that's, Whatever the layering on top of that is, that's the function at its core. It's just a way to signal to the appropriate parties that that's the game that you're playing and you're trying to play ball, you know? And more power to them. I mean, that's just a different, um, that's not any more real than anything else. It's just, um, that's just the game they're playing. That's just their little world. Um, I think it makes less sense for people like illustrators or designers or something like that. I knew... I've had the, the luck to meet many sort of legendary designers and illustrators and stuff like that. And I, I have to say very few of them, I can only think of one or two ever came off like they had a brand that they were expressing personally. You know, they didn't dress weird or anything like that. I did go to a Terrell Whitlatch demo once and when she started drawing, she put on steampunk goggles. And I was that I was like, is this a put on, you know, I couldn't tell. <laughs>
Silence. Silence, dog. I'll destroy you. I love you, but I destroy you. I'll eliminate you. Silence. Guard sees her. Is that Mickey Mouse? Yes. This is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse confirmed. I do digital only. Problem is I just cannot grasp color gamuts. I know what I can do with it, but I don't know what I shouldn't be done with it. I don't use color gamuts. I can't help you. You don't need to use color gamuts. If they don't work for you, don't use them. There's no rules. It's all fake. Art is an illusion. There's no rules, there's only tools. Art is fake, it's artifice. Everything is a put on, everything is a lie. Just do whatever you want, it will be fine. Believe in yourself. The world is chaos, there's no free will, and we live in deterministic structure. Our actions and our feelings are controlled by the cosmos itself. So don't worry, you're not an agent, you're conscious, but you're just along for the ride. You don't know what's going to happen, but brother, it's predetermined, destined, it's fated. You're discovering it along with everyone else. Where did this go? Am I doing this on two layers? Crap, I'm doing this on a bunch of layers. by Winter Illust. I feel that he wrote lyrics for King Crimson or Tool in the past. That's gotta be a, that'd be a sick gig. I don't think they'd ever be so on the nose about it though. <laughs> I think they'd bury it a little deeper rather than just coming right out saying it. Peaceful, tranquil doom bots. Yeast. Sid Daly says, I've been working on a piece, want to get some feedback on it. I'm sorry, I can't give feedback uh, to people. Not these days. I can only give feedback to my students. It's just a time function.
I give feedback on my course and that takes up, that alone takes up a huge amount of time. A huge amount of my time. <laughs> I can't really give feedback outside of that context these days. But don't stop looking for feedback. Find a friend. They don't have to be a crazy good pro or anything like that. Just build up your art community of people who will give you feedback that you trust. And that takes work, you know? You gotta show a bunch of people a bunch of things and then uh, see who, who kind of aligns with you, you know? You're not looking for anybody to pat your ass. Well, a little bit. You're looking for a little bit, you know? They gotta be like, they gotta be cool, you know? They gotta see it and be like, brother, you're doing good. Brother, I'm loving seeing this. Brother, now this is nice. Brother, you're exciting me, brother. I'm ready to kiss, baby. Didn't know you could draw this good. I'm ready to give a little peck. I'm ready to give it a little mwah, right on it, baby. But also, this could be a little bit better. Thinking such and such about the value range. That's the vibe that you want. It's gotta be a little not okay with feedback in there. It's gotta be a little problematic and also feedback. It's gotta be a little like, why do you guys talk to each other that way? But then also feedback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Lalokin says, what if I just keep drinking beer listening to Soviet Army Choir? Is that a band? Or are you saying in general Soviet Army Choirs? Um, Soviet Army Choir would be a great name for a band. And read Dostoevsky. Would that work for my art? Absolutely not. The Russians produce too much despair. They produce far too much despair. Not a good choice. You'll never do art if you read too much Dostoevsky. The only, the, only, the only valid options for reading as an artist are uh, Mark Twain and Cormac McCarthy. Anything else is completely ineffectual. It doesn't rub your brain the right way. Jordi Letao says, what is your take on NFTs as a tool to both another source of income and as another layer of authenticity to more renowned artists and another form of collecting digitally? I'm so tired of, of all of it. Can I just be perfect? Just to be perfectly honest, like I'm so tired. I... When NFTs happened a few years ago, um, I was interested just as like, a, well, this is novel, you know, but as for everything that it promises, I just don't know. I mean, it's just not for me. You know, I know a lot of people did them and are still doing them. Um, and I don't know how successful they are with them anymore. You know, it, it, it's sort of rode a wave and then went down and who knows if another wave is coming but um it's just not for me i i'm i'm the wrong person to ask about stuff like that i mean i'm i'm um i'm so the wrong person to ask i mean i'm a i'm a freak man i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm like a art religious zealot like I should be a, I should be an art monk. That's all it is. You know, Th this is just a form of meditation for me. All of the commercialization, all of this other stuff is, is mind poison. I mean, it's ruining everything. It's desecrating it. It's, um, all that stuff is deeply, deeply strange to me. And take that from someone who's made every dollar they've ever made in their life, basically. Uh, most of the money I've ever made in my life is from art, you know? 
And it's just, it's just another market, you know? Again, I'm not in it, so I'm the wrong person to ask. You should really, I do think an NFT person needs, you know, in, an, in like an honest conversation, maybe at this point a behind-the-scenes conversation with them, it's an NFT person who needs to answer that and talk about, do they really do those things? Do they produce income? Does it actually layer authenticity? Things like that. I don't know. To me, it's just, it's just another market. All the things it's promising, freedom and everything like that, it's like, you, you just, it's just another marketplace. It's just another, all right, well, what sells as an NFT and what's the current vibe? And it's just all the same stuff again, all of the commercialization, all of the hunting trends, all of the trying to get people to buy it, you know? It's not, and, and that's fine. And it's fine to just reiterate, reiterate those same old tired traps in slightly different configurations. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. But I don't see how it is what people were promising or saying about it. I, they did throwing around words like freedom and, and, and things like that. It's like, how, how it's the, it's just people buying more shit. We have that. It does, it doesn't, I, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. It's not for me. For people who, who, for whom it does work for them and it aligns with them, interesting but I'm deeply uninterested in that stuff I can't get emotional I can't get my hackles up for that stuff anymore I don't want more I don't want more conditions in the work I want less I don't want more connection to other, to these vast systems. I don't want that. I don't want this fucking hyper pop panoply of just the entire world screeching at me from my phone. I don't want my art to be on some infinite ledger of all the art ever made and it's all got a Bitcoin attached to it. It's like, back to vacuum, baby away. I want to, I want to recede. <laughs> and it's, it's warping everybody's minds and it makes it impossible to be an artist. Like having so much of your ex exposure to art be like Instagram, where it's just everywhere. It's just everything. It's everything. It's absolutely everything. It's everything that everyone is ever making all the time forever. How the hell are you supposed to operate like that? It's impossible. And make sure that it, that promise, that guarantees you will never make anything. That guarantees you're not going to make shit. That guarantees that you're not going to make shit. And the shit that you do make is going to be just nothing, nothing, droll nothing. Just in constant communication with everybody in the world and just, well, oh, well, I can't do that because the 8 million other people have made it. And it's just like, you need to... You need to have some breathing room to trick yourself into thinking that you're original for a minute. You got to get a little bit back to childlike freedom. It's like the facts are the facts on the internet. If you're going to just be connected to everything, you're never going to do anything. People are always going to look at what you did and be like, oh, well, that looks like this that was made. You know, you know, we've got the entire history of art here at our fingertips and we're all looking at these images. That's just this plus this. And it looks just like that. And oh, that reminds me of this. And pretty soon, inevitably, it doesn't matter what, what kind of brain you have. That's going to happen enough times that you're just going to be like, oh, right, I don't need to make anything. And you're just going to quit. Why wouldn't you? With, with that kind of exposure to all that stuff, of course you're going to quit. <laughs> of course you're going to quit. We were supposed to, that's not what our brains were made for. We were supposed to be shocked 
that anyone else made th some kind of art because we discovered some dusty, wrinkled book with their art in it at the fucking library. And that was the good amount of surprise and and discovering weird things and 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 not knowing stuff. And now we're just we hyper connected ourselves into utter irrelevance, you know. And just NFTs just have all of that. I'm still I, I forgot why I'm talking about this. I'm talking about NFTs, right? It's like it's just another marketplace. It's just more. All right, here's all the famous NFT artists. Here's a famous AI artist. Here's what this kind of NFT goes for. Here's how much this costs. You know, this is about what you would price this kind of a thing. And these colors are in, and these kinds of animations are in, and these kinds of contact matters are in. It's like, my God. My God. My God. Why would we want that? Why would we want that? Why would you want the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and over again? We all need a we all need a brief period of forgetting, I think. Take a vacation, a vacation from all that stuff. Forget that you're unoriginal. Forget that you're not doing anything new. Forget that it's all been done. Let your little mind uh, lull itself into thinking that this is great, because it is, because it is great. You just need to be disconnected from just the, the infinite everything, every possible viewpoint, every possible interpretation, every possible piece of information, just all the time, all the time. What's your favorite mech artist, Steven? Um, I don't know many names. You know, I'm just, I generally loved Gundams when I was a kid. So whoever designed all the Gundams. And um, I like Emerson Tung of more modern people. Besides that, I don't really follow m many mech artists. I mean, anyone who's been following the stream for a long time knows this is kind of a lark for me. I almost never draw stuff like this. I'm really an organic guy. So being overexposed to things limits your creativity? Of course. Of course. I mean, go hermit mode. Rescind. Run. Retreat into yourself. Get everybody else's thoughts out of your goddamn ear. Get my thoughts out of your ear. Retreat into yourself. Disappear, disappear, disappear. Vanish, vanish, vanish.
I've been on several, not just social media detoxes, but um, I've done full art detoxes. I did one that lasted a couple months, years and years ago. I'll always remember that time. I refused to look at images for a couple months, just to test, just to see. I can't remember if it was Art Station back then. I don't think so. I think back then the, the art site was CG Hub, which some of you might remember. But, um, you know, I was feeling all of, you know, all of these things and uh, it was the only thing I could think to do. So I stopped looking at everybody's art. I stopped looking at all art. I didn't go to the art sites. Um, I didn't go to people's websites. I only looked at art if it was absolutely necessary for work. So if I was in a you know meeting or I needed to fix someone else's work or and besides that I just refused to look at images. Didn't watch any animated movies. It's just like I'm off of images for a while. And uh, the effects were very interesting. My my brain kept insisting on art. It wanted art, and uh, since I had sort of blocked off seeing everybody else's art, it was just like, all right, well, you got to make it, motherfucker, because I got to see some. <laughs> it made me want to work a lot more. It made me want to draw a lot more. Because instead of it just being about producing, the part of me, instead of it just being about producing or my career or reiterating on the habits, it put me in a situation where the part of me that is a fan of art had no recourse but to ask the part of me that produces art to make art because it was a fan of art and needed to see images. Estras Munoz with $5. Thank you so much. I said, I heard you were cutting down the coffee, sir. I am. I am. Trying to get better sleep scores. Trying to improve my grades. <laughs> Definitely trying to improve my grades. Thank you so much for the $5. I really appreciate it. I'll turn it into something good. It might not be coffee, but uh, some other little treat. A piquant little treat. My little pecadillos. Maybe a little candy. Ooh, some watermelon sour patch kids. Now we're talking. I got a sweet tooth. Still a fan of candy. Oh, some brownies. Maybe I'll turn it into brownies. Get some dark teeth. Turn those $5 into $5 worth of dark teeth. Ooh, yeah. Dark teeth, baby. Everybody going to be seeing me being like, did you see some brownies? It's like, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, man. I'm advocating. I'm advocating for that brownie life. Solid sofa mech? Hells yeah. Needs 15% more sofa. Last time I saved. I've heard that Dave Raposa did the same to improve an art. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't heard that particular story from Dave, but I would not be surprised. Who knows? Maybe I got the idea from him. Maybe I heard him talk about it somewhere. This was a long time ago, so I can't really remember what I was going through that instigated it. I just remember that I did it. My only note is needs more armrest. Whoa, easy on the backseat art, art directing. 
Easy on the back seat arc directing from your armrest back seat. Don't speak. I don't want you to back seat arc direct. On a dark desert highway, arc direct in my shit. I'm just trying to draw here, and you are directing my shit. I saw her shimmering light. My head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell. And I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven or this could be hell. Ready a room at the motherfucking place, yo. At the fucking place, at the fucking place. Ready a room at the motherfucking place, motherfucker. Any time of year, you gotta ready that shit for me. Ay, hijo. I love your streams, but why you have to say those words? Ay, mijo. I wanted to draw, but instead I've been staring at Armored Core art books for the past hour. Dude, draw your own Armored Core art book. Burn that thing. You want to see that stuff? Say, I got to draw it if I want to see it. That one's pretty cool. No, I don't know. I like that one. You guys know, it's rare I <laughs> it's rare I draw anything where I'm like, oh wait, oh shit, that's actually pretty chill. Something about that. Hmm. There's some ideas to be explored there. It only takes uh, three hours and five involved drawings to get to anything you might find vaguely interesting. I'd have to resolve all this. This would need to be ultra cool and it's not ultra cool right now this whole looping donut thing needs to be cool what size is your canvas uh let's take a look 72054577 typical sacred numbers you know it's just the uh you know the usual same as the old masters did it's just like the the number of members of pink floyd and you just use that for the dimensions and that guarantees that the aspect ratios are biologically pleasing to the eye.
It's like the robo is wearing high heels. Yeah. And you know that's what makes stuff cool? Pay attention, man. It's Baybot. How much is it to print an image made with a drawing program on a canvas? If somebody doing this, or is it just a data file for the time being? Uh, I think a lot of places do it, like just normal office printing places. Most of them do offer some kind of service like that. They probably just send it out to a vendor and then hike up the price and charge you for it. So you might just be able to find a cheaper place online, but a lot of places do that. It's usually not cheap. It's usually really overpriced. It's probably, because the results are usually not great. You know, if you get up close to it, it looks like garbage usually. You're probably like, it's probably like a hundred bucks on the low end, depending on the size. My ass is starting to hurt. My body's giving me signals. I'm gonna get off soon. I gotta honor my body's request for physical movement. We've been drawing for about three hours, so. Oh, dude, and it's one. It blew past lunchtime, son. Son. Check out my drawing course. 
if you want to learn some form, learn the modeling factors, how to render things, how to believe what you're drawing. Don't get it if you want to do your own thing and discover things on your own, which is totally valid. Whatever. Support me on Patreon if you want a bunch of patron-only audio, scans of my pencil drawings. They're all on there. Big archive of patron-only bonuses sitting there. I'm also thinking of doing some um, patron-only streams soon. I've been wanting to do that here on YouTube. So if you'd be interested in that, think about supporting me on Patreon. Those would just be private streams. And uh, I would just put the link up to the video up on Patreon when it goes live. And then that would be our intimate little patron space. Been hankering to do something like that for a while. Just because I feel like I want a space where I can um, still talk to people, but I want to want to do other kinds of stuff on there that don't really want to do in public, on the pu just public stream. Do slower stuff. Work on laying out some books in there. Maybe do some writing on that. Talk more shit, of course. You can always talk more shit behind a paywall. <laughs> Seriously, though. Just be meaner, more aggressive. Do some studying on there. Read some Wikipedia pages. <laughs> Stuff that's just way too boring to do on regular YouTube. Will you show your toes there? No, no. God damn it. You're never gonna get that. I wonder if I should just do the same on this side as I have on the other side. We'll see kind of resolve that. For 640, are you going to hold my hand while I draw? I would never disgrace you like that. I would never hold you back like that. For 640, I'm going to kick you out into the art woods, into the chilly art waste, thigh deep in art snow. And I'm going to say, draw your way out. Draw to survive. That's what I'll do for It's Patreon, not OnlyFans, y'all.
Thank you for the stream. Have an epic lunch. No problem, Arctic Monkey. Thanks for being here. We'd we be drinking margaritas made with Patron during the patron streams. Dude, on Patreon streams, we can let our hair down. Might do a little bit of drinking. <laughs> How? F <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. All, all I'm going to do on Patreon streams is um, get high and look at art. <laughs> That'll be the, the Patreon benefit. All I'm going to do is get completely blasted and look at art and go, holy Holy God. Whoa, that's a really good drawing. Damn, that's a really good drawing. Fuck, man. Psst, that's crazy. That's crazy. Now I'll click to the next one. Oh, shit, man. I can't even, I can't even look at that right now, dog. God damn. That's a really good drawing. Fuck. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm just going to do that for five hours at a clip and be like, thanks for the money, everybody. See <laughs> over and over. The more I talk about it, the more it seems like a really good idea. The more it seems like a really good idea. Smash cut to Steven looking at a pizza menu. Yeah, it's just me looking at the um, the drawings of a little Italian man on a pizza box and going, shit. That is a really good drawing. That's a really good drawing. Or he's like, he's pulling on his mustache and going, you know, but also he's like rubbing his, his long mustache. He's got the hat. I'm just like, damn, that's a really good drawing. Fuck, that's a really good drawing. Damn. Oh, If you're gonna do that, I'd just, I'd just go all the way and do mushrooms instead. It'd be the same thing, I'd just be crying the whole time. It would be the same intonation, same content, just tears are streaming from my eyes while I do it instead. Just like, shit, man. <laughs> That's an amazing draw.
I love mechs, but I haven't drawn them in forever. Forever, I drew them even before I considered getting good at drawing. Yeah, they're so fun. They're fun. Yo, we all love a good rabbit. Maybe you should draw some mechs again. Damn. All right, guys, I gotta go move around. Maybe take a walk. My the old hiney is kicking. It's kicking. I'm getting some twitches and the glutenoids. The Buttocus Maximus is demanding attention, saying, we got to roll. Oh. Considering to take a new course, will your stuff help me to get better with shapes and perspective? Um, you're talking about my course, Form from Imagination? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think its emphasis is shapes and perspective. There is some perspective teaching in there for setting up the cube, but the focus of the course is rendering, rendering knowledge, how to understand lighting, how light works, how to make something seem realistic and have solid form. Uh, there are parts of the course that focus on, that talk about shapes and a bit of shape design. And surprisingly, I, I, there is quite a bit of talk about the shapes of the modeling factors, like why core shadows have their shape, why reflected light has its shape, but shape design more broadly construed, like for design, I would not say the course focuses on that. I would go somewhere else for that, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. It's a deep dive on form. It's a deep dive. A Hayao Miyazaki ad on your live stream couldn't be more fitting. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. He's a good egg. I, I know most people, um, I know enough good things haven't been said about Miyazaki. You know, I know people spend most of their time dunking on him, trash talking him, but I'm going to take a pretty, pretty radical stance and say he's a good egg. That's what I'm going to say. Does your intuition for form on paper translate well for observational drawings? It does. Yeah. I mean, I developed them in tandem, but um, yeah, I draw, I draw, I draw well from observation as well. I think working from my head is definitely my strong suit, but yeah, it serves me well when I draw from observation. All right, everybody, I'm gonna run. Thank you for being here. Goodbye to Tlangi, goodbye Henrique, goodbye Kim Kimson, Reynola Dominguez, Gablinks, Seth Hat, Arctic, Monkey, Corey Kroonmacher, Arknark, Arknark, Saman, Kucher, Alex, Dejac, Mish, drive-by commentore, drive-by commentore, Mr. Tsun, Zangi Tai, Michael Schlater, Moyo Wango Kessa, Telepathic Fish, Matt Brennan Kessa, and Gooch Canoe. Ready a room at the hotel, Gooch Canoe. Such a lovely Gooch. Such a lovely gooch. Ready a room at the hotel gooch canoe. Such a lovely gooch. What a lovely gooch. Wow, I'm leaving right when my, my bits are crashing. That's weird. All right, everybody. I'm going to roll. Take care. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day of drawing. I will see you all soon. Peace.